What's up? This is Olympic gold medalist Joey Cheek for Daily House Sports Show. We've got a very special edition coming up. What's going on? This is Joey here at the incredible YouTube studios in London, and I have a special guest, Olympic silver medalist for Great Britain in the modern pentathlon, Heather Fell. Heather, how are you? Hi. Very good, thank you. Enjoying the Olympics right now. Now, in the U.S., football, baseball, and basketball are the three biggest sports, and I think pentathlon is about fourth. Yeah, it's, really? it's very, very popular. Wow. That's almost, almost true. Yeah. So for those few five, ten people in America who haven't heard about it, could you, you real who quick, have heard about who, it. <laughs> who've not heard of it, could you just run through real quick the five events of modern pentathlon? Well, in order, we start with the fencing, uh, epee fencing, swimming, 200 meter swim, show jumping for the riding part, and then finish with a run and shoot combined, a bit like biathlon. The sport itself, these five different disciplines, they're all very different in terms of the skill sets required. Mm -hmm. Is there one that's more important than any of the others? Um, I think they're pretty evenly weighted. Maybe the swimming is the least um, sort of influential. But now since they've changed it, since Beijing, the run and shoot combined, being two sports in one, it, has, it looks like it has more effect, but it's actually two different sports combined. Now, quite a few people, they used to shoot precision targets, if I'm not mistaken, correct, with pellets. When they switched from precision to the combined, a lot of people went up, a lot of people went down. Did you like the combined or did you not like the combined? I liked it because it was a new challenge. Like after Beijing, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to carry on what I was going to do. So it was something new to focus on and to learn a new skill, really. So I think in that sense, it was quite a positive change. Okay, now these five different sports, you guys have to be world class in each of them. Could you talk us through like what a training day would be? Because it's unbelievable to imagine how you can be so skilled at so many very disparate activities. Um, I'm not quite sure if we're world class at all of them, but we do our best. Um, I mean, training is so varied. There's no normal day. Uh, for us, the British squad, we pretty much do five runs a week, five swims a week. Um, well, I, I personally only have one riding lesson a week. Some of them have more, but I came from that. Um, and then what else do we have? Fencing. We have three actual sessions and then three fencing lessons we'll do gym three times a week and then shooting most days we shoot sometimes with a running sometimes shooting on its own so, so it's quite a full week so how many hours is that uh, i really don't know actually it's it's a lot it's full time yeah now um the british team has had some interesting uh, you've got four great girls or five great girls is that correct you had five qualify you were a silver medalist in beijing and Tell us, walk us what happened, because you're not competing here in Beijing. Uh, tragedy, in my mind, the best British pentathlete <laughs> left off the school. Tell us what happened. Um, it basically came down to world championships, and our ranking, the way our selection policy was worded, that a medal at world championships this year um, superseded anything else. So I qualified off the ranking list, and when the ranking list closed, I was ranked, I think, seventh in the world. But that the fact that the other two had won medals at the major competition they performed on the day when they had to they won their place and it was black and white so it didn't actually come down to selectors having to sit down and, and discuss it so in in sense it's fair because we knew beforehand what the consequences and what the selection criteria was right now you are you're familiar with rule 40 the rule that's sort of been talked about all over the the world for athletes not being able to tweet or be featured in their own sponsors during the olympics correct i have heard about it i didn't know it was rule 40 but yeah so right now it's a very big deal in the U.S. because a lot of U.S. athletes, with the exception of Michael yeah. Phelps, Apollo Ono, they barely make a living. Could you yeah. talk about what the support system is like in, in the U.K. and if it's, if it's good or what, you, what you'd like to see? Well, we've been really lucky because once um, London got the Games, the funding has sort of was stabilized for the next you know, few years up to this. So we have U.K. sport funding, which is set up, which comes through the lottery sort of, um, from mm -hmm. the government, that all athletes, pretty much every athlete competing at the Games will be on that funding. And then all athletes have... You know, different sponsorships, um, some more than others, obviously, depending on the popularity of the sport. But also, as a result of London, like personally, as a pentathlete, funding and sponsorship wasn't really too great before um, before Beijing. And as a result of Beijing and a result of London, I've actually been quite lucky, and I've had various sponsors that have noticed my sport. And you know, it's it's known as being as a British woman, we've been so successful in pentathlon. And I think a lot of sponsors wanted to jump on this with the fact of London coming and hoping they could get something out of it. So we've definitely had seen a massive advantage of, of the home games already. Yeah. Now, do you think, one, do you think that support will continue? Or two, what do you think pentathlon needs to do as a sport to continue to keep that awareness up and that, that sort of funding? Gosh, that's a hard question. Um, for the first one, um, the support, I might, someone else asked me that earlier today, and I think that 
everything about London, we're talking about the legacy and this is such a massive thing. So if they cut funding now, it would be rather ridiculous on our legacy of sport and we've got you know, so many people involved. So I'm hoping that with medals at the Games, which hopefully we will get in Pentathlon for, for Great Britain, um, funding should carry on as it has and the coaches will stay there and the programme should just carry on to expand. Um, remind me of your other question. So what do you think the sport needs to keep going? But you've, you've sort of answered that. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously it needs the funding, but for the funding it needs the results and in results it also also needs the media coverage so like we've seen the change in our sport from Beijing to to London the fact of changing bringing the shooting into the running to make it more exciting for spectators more media friendly that's been a massive change for the sport and we will see hopefully you know it will now maintain its Olympic status and we know we're into 2016 hopefully we'll get voted in again for 2020. Great you're going to continue to Rio? I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> okay now we've got a real quick speed round three questions okay, okay first question Medal predictions for the women. Oh my, Lena Schoenborn, oh, Mari Spence, Sam Murray. Okay, second, um, pellets or laser gun? Laser. Third, Marguerite Saxon, cute or cutest ever? <laughs> no, I can't answer that one. That's not fair. She's cutest ever. Come on. <laughs> Heather, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, are you going to be doing some other YouTube channels as well while you're here? Um, if they don't make me wear my swimsuit, then maybe. Okay, great. So Heather will be around the YouTube offices all day. I'm Joey Cheek. This is the Daily House Sports Show. Thanks for checking in. Say goodbye to America. Cheers, America.